Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen, good to see you again, and we've got a matchup against my man Arnell, he's running the Black Yellow Luffy, aka my, like, arch nemesis when playing either Luchi or Gecko. Um, it is a, it's a pretty terrifying matchup, but uh, if you look at the starting hand, it was pretty solid. I mean, come on, you can't beat it. Two Morias, um, seeing a, an Ice Age as well as a Perona and a Absalom. Absalom and Ice Age not really going to do me much here, um, but the Perona very very nice for my turn two play and then going into eight cost morias is always great uh, just having as many eight costs as possible in this matchup is pretty much how i can sort of have a chance because it's for sure uh, without a doubt uh, the worst matchup for any uh, mono black leader and now we've got a garp picking up i believe it was a two cost ace and then another garp coming down picking up the two cost sabo so two of the kids being picked up. I get another Ice Age, which that card is not doing me any favors right now. Um, definitely need to cycle that out. But at the same time, I do want to get down Perona. So I'm going to go ahead and play down Perona, forcing a trash as well as attacking life. Usually speaking, I don't like to attack into life. But since I'm on the odd curve and I didn't really have any other plays, I decided to go for it. I don't mind him staying at three, um, but I do not want to put him to two because it allows Black Yellow Luffy to get to zero life really easy if they're at two. Um, three, it becomes at least a little more tricky, uh, and he's just going to go ahead and get down to two, though, it looks like here. So maybe attacking into life <laughs> doesn't end up playing out the way I want it to. Um, but he is going to play down Sabo and uh, cycle out, I believe it was a 5 cost Egghead Luffy as well as one of the Kid Aces. And now look at my hand, my hand is unbelievable. Off the top of my life I get Isho and off the top of the deck I get Moria. I have no counter power, no blockers, which is absolutely terrifying. Um, and yeah, I mean it's just the life we live right now, but uh, I am just going to swing 6. And using leader effect, I pitch a Moria, trying to get something off the top of my deck, but I don't get anything, uh, which is pretty rough. And I knew his leader was seven, so that's why I didn't, you know, attach an extra Dawn to go to seven. I just went six because I wanted to see if I could potentially get a card played to board. Uh, lucky he swings five here, though. We do have the 1K with Absalom, um, but another... Garp is going to pick up another Sabo for us. I uh, hate to see Sabo. It's never great for us. Um, but an ace swing, I'm definitely going to have to take. Uh, luckily, we do get up another Perona, but look at this. <laughs> I'm drawing into all of my eight costs. I mean, you, you would think this is incredible, and arguably it is. It's kind of, kind of great, but at the same time, it's also kind of terrifying because I have literally no plays until the following turn i have no counter for any aggression that comes the, the turn after uh i am just gonna pitch oh i pitch an isho here i think pitching an ice age would have been way better but um i do finally end up getting like some sort of a card uh to play that's useful and i end up getting hogback i return isho and moria and i pick up that absalom i already know that my hand is just chock full of eight costs so uh, I'll do that, and now I've got uh, three Dawn to work with. i got nothing to do, so I'm just going to pass it back over. <clears throat> Isho on the following turn to rip two cards will be really nice. Uh, at least for Moria, I have a Rebecca in Trash already to, you know, have some sort of, like, offense and defense with that. But a 7K swing, lucky for us, we have the 2K and the 1K. Uh, he's going to hit me with another Ace, though. I'm going to have to take this hit. And he passes the turn. I now have two 1k counters, but um, putting that Perona in trash is actually really helpful for me because I can just go for my Moria play uh, into a Rebecca. I also potentially uh, have like an Ice Age Absalom, but um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm kind of looking at my trash like on the side uh, and I'm just kind of deciding like what's 
more than likely going to be my best option. I want to play offensive and defensive. Like, I know that I have to stop some of these things. So I decide to play the Moria. And I bring out the Rebecca and pick up the Brook. I'll play Brook to KO the Ace at least. And um, I just realized that I made a mistake. I ended up picking up uh, I ended up picking up Perona from my trash as well. And I was wondering what he was talking about. But then I realized, I was like, oh yeah, I'm an idiot. I just played Brook off of picking it up off of Rebecca. So just a small, like, just a small mistake on my part. But yeah, I just play out the Brook, KO the Ace, and uh, pass it back over now i don't have a lot of counter in hand i at least have the rebecca which is nice um I, i'm sorry about the glare unfortunately i didn't get the best seat uh this past locals and i ended up just getting a bit of a glare i think i end up remedying this a bit later in the match where i i realized that there's quite a bit of a glare and i moved the cards a bit but um three brothers bond is gonna find him a two cost ace there uh or excuse me, a two cost Sabo, but yeah, he's got a, uh, he, he's got a, he's got himself in like a kind of a weird spot because like we haven't seen any five cost, um, we haven't seen any five cost, uh, uh, Luffy's yet. And I think Luffy would just be super, super good for him here, but I'm going to counter out of this one K, um, from the five K leader swing. And now Sabo's just going to cycle out his hand a little bit. Uh, doesn't need Ice Age realistically unless he has the 5 cost Luffy for like a following a follow-up turn to get rid of some of my, my higher end cards. But um, I believe he has 6 in hand now. So now is going to be that optimal time to put down Isho and get some sort of value out of it. Uh, it was a bit risky to, to not attack with or to not block with Rebecca knowing that he can fairly easily um you know <laughs> kind of just <laughs> get rid of that with the five cost Luffy but I swing five here just testing the waters to see if he'll go up to six in hand because I think he had five and so I decide uh to take two cards let's see I get a Moria which is absolutely massive and an ace uh just picking up Moria is like so so important for us right now uh if he doesn't have another one in hand that that might have just been game winning for us um and i'm gonna decide to go uh six i think this is just going into i believe this is actually going into life uh, i want to get him to zero but and I, now you can see i'm kind of pulling my cards back a little bit because i realized that the glare was really miserable and sorry about that unfortunately you know uh it just happens but um, yeah, he's thinking about this 6k swing. I still have the one Dawn left to swing six with leader as well, uh, which I am going to, but it's a pretty easy 2k counter or rest a Sabo in a 1k and then a block with, uh, you know, one of the Sabos for the Gecko Moria swing. Now passing it back over. If he has the Moria, um, we're not looking bad, but we're also not still not out of the water yet because he does we know that he does have a lot of the aces and trash uh, he can just cycle that out a little bit um two dawn onto the leader already so makes me think that there might be some shenanigans coming but instead it goes a little bit differently uh we're gonna see a 6k swing with garp here <clears throat> uh this one this threw me off a little bit but it, it basically tells me the story that he doesn't have a cost uh, for sure. So we got very lucky with Isho kind of ripping that out. Um, I'm deciding whether I should be countering this or if I should be blocking this. I know that his leader is more than likely going to swing extremely tall. Uh, so I do just give him the two 1Ks that I have right there um, to get out of the attack. And uh, he is going to trash a five cost Luffy here though. Putting back Sabo as well as Ace. Um, and with the two, or excuse me, four Dawn left, he has both, I believe, the Sabo and the Ace. So we'll see, yep, Ace coming down, bringing out uh, the five cost and the Sabo as well. Uh, go leader going up to nine, which is terrifying. This is why we saved Rebecca, because now a 7k swing, unfortunately, I have to take because I need Rebecca to be able to block either attack at life from leader or an attack at the Gecko Moria. And Gecko Moria is kind of like my last ditch effort of potentially surviving. Um, my draws for this game have been both okay and really bad. 
uh yeah we end up we end up having like ourselves in a bit of a weird situation now um he's only got two cards in hand but i know that more than likely they have to just be two 2k counters because of how many times he's played sabo down um i only have two 1ks myself so moria into rebecca is looking more and more like a like a probability because even if i just swing nine 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 and then eleven um he has a way to get out of every single one so with the nine i'm kind of testing the waters and hoping that he will uh he will give me a block um i doubt that he will but that's what i'm hoping for uh but he ends up countering which is very smart he knows that just keeping the right amount of swings for the following turn is more important than anything uh now i'm considering whether i should be uh attacking into life again or ace and i think if i'm not mistaken i'm going for i'm going for ace here because i i know that i can only survive a certain amount of attacks the following turn depending on how many like one what his last card is what the last card off the top of the deck will be uh, if he does end up finding a two cost ace i think we just lose on the spot um but stopping at least one more attack is pretty important. So I am going to go seven into the ace. I'm like, either give me that last card or let it go. And so he does let it go, which is nice. But now I got to think, okay, he's got three attacks minimum next turn. Uh, being Sabo, Sabo, and leader. Um, I can get a 5k swing through right here. I'm going to go nine to life. Yet again, kind of hoping and praying that he blocks. Uh, but he doesn't. He gives me a counter. And then I'm just going to go ahead and play 8 cost Moria. Now, I think in hindsight, there was a slightly better way that I could have played that out. I think that a 9 check to um, to Ace first, and then an 11 with Isho might have potentially baited out my opponent using uh, a blocker instead of two 2Ks. But uh, it was, a, I don't know, kind of a weird call. But... Uh, I do end up lifting two cards off the board to play this Rebecca out, thinking that I had a brand new, but I didn't. So I just put back one of them, which was the Perona, and then I just pick up a Perona from Trash uh, right here. So only play the Rebecca off the Moria, uh, and just the Rebecca replaces my Hog back. Because uh, when I was looking back over this, I thought it was weird. I was like, did I just play a Rebecca and a Perona? But I realized that I just took back uh, lifting Perona off the board because I thought I had a brand new, but it was just in hand. So now a 9k with Sabo, this is really tricky. Um, he's swinging 9, I have to take the life. I get super lucky here and get a 2k counter. Um, yet again, this is not a good matchup for this deck. And I'm thinking of blocking, I'm thinking of countering, but I'm like, I'm going through all the stuff in my head. I'm like, I haven't seen a 5 cost Luffy yet. We haven't seen any kid Luffy's. So I decide to counter out of this thinking that Luffy was the threat. But realistically, even if he did have that, he would have just gotten the card out of my hand anyways. Um, and he would have won the game. So uh, he would have KO'd the blocker and then still swung enough to, to go for game since I had no life. But <clears throat> kind of an irrelevant action there. Um, yeah, and now we have a 5k swing with Garp. I luckily have the 1k to get out of it. And then a block for with the Rebecca for the 6k. Uh, we get we got super lucky there at the end. I feel like the it was kind of crazy draws drawing into like all my Ishos and Morias in this matchup. It felt like my entire hand had no counter for like the first three to four turns. Um, but eventually, you know, we kind of just snuck by uh, pretty sneakily with you know not, maybe not having as much counter as we would have liked to stay healthier in the match earlier. But yeah, I mean you can't really beat drawing this many eight costs into your worst matchup because it's definitely what won me the game was the isho ripping out the gecko moria um my eight costs being able to bounce uh bounce back like blockers and and very useful cards um definitely pretty insane but uh, i'll take it yeah but hope you guys enjoyed the match i thought this one was really entertaining and uh, if you guys enjoy the play mat that i'm using please consider picking one up on the website the luffytcg.com other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic night. I'll see you in some of the Twitch streams, and peace.